Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, why do people struggle with indie comics? Now, what, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've, if you've been to a store, and this is one of those areas where the dialogue on online, uh, primarily through social media, of course, and YouTube channels and other places where uh, dialogue does happen, you would get the impression that a lot of uh, customers are you know, happy to buy manga and happy to buy indie comics and that Marvel and DC, you know, that there's there's plenty of disagreement with those companies and everything else. But then when you look at the sales figures, you you see a very different story, and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. And this is where misinformation kind of uh, hurts things because you know, Bleeding Cool will run articles about how like something is killing the children is is and Spawn are selling like crazy numbers, and it's the highest it's ever been. Except when you do the analysis on say Spawn. Yeah, that, that issue 300 did great. But before that, even like five, six issues before that, the title was selling much lower, selling in that 10,000 to 20,000 range and usually closer to 10. Uh, Savage Dragon, a comic again, lots of people know of, sells, you know, well under 10,000. A lot of indie comics sell lower. And it's one of those reasons I've, I've heard people speculate saying, hey, you know, Donnie Cates has this crossover book I saw on Bleeding Cool. It's like the biggest book launch of the entire year. Why in the world is he still working for Marvel? Like that, that doesn't make any sense. He's, he's popular. He's successful. He's got titles out uh, that, are, that are his. You know, why, why is he still, you know, putting up with Marvel and their page rate and the fact that he's creating characters and storylines that he doesn't get to own? Like, uh, why in the world would you do that? Well, I mean, other than the, the simple fact that, you know, Marvel gives you promotion or DC or, you know, you get to work on big characters that are world renowned that helps build your career. That's one big reason why you do it. Um, the other is that uh, the sales of the indie works are, are not as high as they're often portrayed on Bleeding Cool and on social media. The, the, the reality is if you go into a comic shop and you kind of listen to customers and you you know, you, you kind of see the pace of what sells and what people are, are willing to pick up and try. One of the things that almost every retailer will tell you is that they have a hard time uh, selling comics that are not Marvel or DC to, to customers, that they have a hard time getting people to be comfortable enough to try these other comics. And, and this is, by the way, a huge clue. If you're an indie comic maker, if you're hoping to do a crowdfunding campaign or whatever else you're trying to do, Pay attention to one very simple fact. The Twitter audience, and you've heard this on this channel before, is somewhere between 5 and 10% of the people actually buying comics in the store. Put another way, you could lose that entire customer base. It can go to zero. And, you know, you certainly want, wouldn't want your business to lose 10%, but you could survive. You could absolutely survive it. And that's one very big important note for publishers to like don't cater, don't spend 90% of your marketing and your time catering to the 10%. Because if that 90% starts to leave, that's going to hurt you much worse, like so much worse. Regardless, um, you have to, uh, one of the big question marks and one of the ways that indie comic publishers, producers have been successful is that they've figured out how do you get a comic buyer to take a chance on your book. Now that very sentence is really important because your, your first reaction might be to be offended or to be confused. Like why, why wouldn't somebody take a chance on your book? Like what, what even, what are we even talking about here? Why, why are we, what does that even mean? Take a chance on my book. My book is good. Like why wouldn't somebody try it? That's, that's how a lot of people think. And I talk to a lot of people uh, from time to time in mail or in phone. I'm bad, man, there's been so many uh, emails over the last month. I've got to catch up on them. I feel like I've been saying that for the last year. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is something people really struggle with is like, well, I'll put the comic out and people will just find me. Well, there's an important psychology that you have to figure out. And that is you've got to figure out how to get people to take a chance on your book. Now, why wouldn't somebody be willing to take a chance on your comic? Well, there's, there's one really simple answer to that. They don't believe you're going to make it. They don't believe you're going to keep going. And people typically won't invest their time or money into something that is going to be short-lived. It's one of the, you know, the big problems that TV has is you've got to portray that this series, if you're coming out with a sitcom or some kind of network series or, or something on, 
you, you have to portray the fact that you've got many seasons in you, that this is not just going to be, you know, a, a, a show that's going to get canceled after a couple episodes or, or even one season. Um, look at Jupiter's Legacy that just came out that was promising a big shared universe and, and plenty of stories. And I mean, hell, the first season ended on a cliffhanger, a pretty key one. I mean, as a big fan of the comics, and I am a very big fan of the Jupiter's Legacy comics, uh, I, there, there's so many cool moments that the series didn't get to. I mean, the coolest moments the series never got to. So one way or another, Netflix, uh, you, you guys have to figure out a way to come back to the show at some point. Because, Jesus, this uh, this story, like, you, you did all the setup. Like, where's the <laughs> I got, the payoff? The payoff, damn it. Uh, we got to get to that. That's, that's going to be one of the most aggravating things about this show getting canceled early. Because, damn it, there's, like, the, the payoff is so cool. And, and you got to be able to get to that. So, I mean, people, hopefully, you know, go read the comics, at least. you got to... You know, you got to be able to, to see where the story goes anyway. Uh, but that is the challenge for a lot of indie companies. It's a stigma against a lot of indie comics is that they are going to not last, that you're going to get a couple issues out or, you know, one or two, and then they're just going to disappear. And it's true for everything. People like to invest their time into things that they think is going to have some life to it, some longevity to it. So if you want to be successful, you've got to find a way to communicate this is a ongoing universe. You have worked ahead. You have plans. It, it will go beyond this. And in some ways, you're playing a bit of a game of chicken because, you know, arguably, if you're a content creator and you're putting something out and then it doesn't sell, it's, fin it's not financially you know, possible for it to continue, then, yeah, you know, it's, it's not going to get it's not going to get an issue number two or more copies. It is going to stop. Uh, but from, from a selling perspective, you still have to portray the sense that there's more to this series than just a couple issues. And when I look at a lot of indie comic creators, this is the thing they tend to fail at. They, they tend to kind of present this, this perception that the comic is going to be short-lived and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The, the comic is short-lived. Because, you know, it, it doesn't have the sales and the, the, the power to continue. Um, by the way, this is true with YouTube channels as well. I don't know how many people, they come out, they want to do a YouTube channel, they get a lot of excitement, they put a couple of videos out in the first week, and then uh, within a month or so, they're, they're struggling, they're not seeing the subs go up, and so they kind of give up. And a lot of people won't subscribe and won't kind of buy into the channel. Whereas you could take my approach, which is just, you know, continually just pound the shit out of the channel with as many videos as possible until people surrender and then they just come along. That's That's been my strategy. It's, it's fine. It's still not working great. I mean, there's, you know, when I cross 100,000 subs, then 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 we'll we'll call it that things are working okay. But regardless, um, this is, uh, this for comics, this is a struggle of the indie comic, is that they've got, it's got people like, even if you have a small story, You've got to find a way to package your comic in, in terms of this is a really unique, uh, you know, original graphic novel, you know, it's told from start to finish. But if you're looking for longer term success, it is going to take uh, it's going to take giving the customer base a sense that your comic is going to keep going, that if you can communicate that you will immediately be more successful. That's that's critical. And so when uh, people come to me and they say, they ask for advice like, hey, how do I get my comic off the ground? How do I get people to kind of buy into it? I say you, you need to give people the impression that your comic is, is going to go on for a long time. And oftentimes I'll hear the, oh yeah, that's my plan. Absolutely. Uh, if this comic does well, it's going to go on for a long time. And I say, ah, but see, you have to give people the impression that it's going to go on for a long time before you know it's going to do well. And that's why you do get this disconnect of very cool little indie comics, a lot of good buzz online, a lot of good buzz on Twitter, but then they tend to collapse after six issues, 12 issues, and then maybe the creator says something along the lines of, uh, well, I always, I always meant to just tell this story. I, I was able to tell my complete story. Sounds great, but I'm sure that creator would have rather had 100 plus issues, a franchise, a movie, spinoffs, and all this other kind of ongoing cash coming in. I think they would have preferred that. But you got to give people the impression that it's going to continue. 
Now, really quickly, you might say, well, wait a minute. What about things like Savage Dragon or Spawn that have hundreds of issues under their belt? What about those guys? They are, they're obviously continuing at this point. Yeah, here's the, here's the other side to this. The problem is, if you don't communicate relatively quickly, within the first year or so, that your title is going to keep going, and there are exceptions to this rule. Spawn is definitely one of them. But if, you, if, you, if you're unable to communicate that's going to keep going, but you keep going anyway, then you almost have the reverse problem where new customers are afraid to come into your comic because they're like, there's no way to catch up. Uh, issues 1 through 13 are sold out. I can't find them. They had a low print run, so of course they are. I, I don't know. And a lot of collectors will say, I'm not comfortable with... Uh, you know, buying physical copies starting at issue like 23 and then having digital before that. So then you get into a different problem where the collector says, if I can't have it all, I don't want to start in the first place. And that's a, that's yet a different problem. But for people who are coming out with something new, which is where I was really aiming this video at, for people who have a new comic, a new property, a new something, try and communicate as much as possible that you want to keep going. Try and communicate as much as possible that your plans are to keep going. And this may mean getting a little bit ahead. Like, don't launch your book so quickly. Wait a couple months until you have a couple more issues out of, under your belt that you can not just say, hey, here's issue one, and in three months, here's issue two, and in three months, here's issue three. Try something like that. That way you immediately communicate, this is an ongoing thing that I'm, I'm doing. Then you're going to have a lot more success. You're going to have more people willing to buy in because they feel like if I do buy in, there's more to this story. So they're, they're more likely to, to buy in. Yeah, I said that awkwardly, didn't I? I don't know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. But indie comics, ongoing comics, is one of the key reasons why Marvel and DC have been able to continue. And by the way, it's almost comical because Marvel and DC are canceling books all the time. Yet they have the perception of being a giant company that keeps things going. And so people often, the customers coming in the shop, view Marvel and DC as a safer bet to start collecting comics, even though Marvel has proven that they relaunch and reboot all the time. And I do think at some point customers kind of wake up to this fact and, and that will, that will actually hurt Marvel and DC quite a bit. Anyway, let me know your thoughts below, like, and subscribe. And thanks for listening.